Welcome back to AP Bass, and today is a beautiful day. We've actually left Lake of the Woods. Um, we spent yesterday actually fishing in Wisconsin. There was a huge storm that went through like that area of Canada, so we decided to leave. Um, all of our gear was wet as well from staying in the tent, and we, we had like we did what we came up to do at Lake of the Woods, and now we're on our way back. You know, northern Wisconsin is the place where I've caught my second biggest, maybe my first biggest muskie ever. I didn't actually have like an actual tape on that. It's pretty tough up here and it's really good the la first two hours in the morning and the last two hours in the evening. We figured during the day we're going to try and target some bass. And actually I got my MTB box, my September mystery tackle box today in the boat. Um, I'm going to go over those products here in a second. Uh, but this is what we're going to use to catch the fish today. But, uh, you know, We've got a, a mighty big grill there. We've got some stuff. My buddy John just burned down his boat, so I figured I'd go in that fashion and try and, you know, light some fires, get some things going, make this video a little bit more interesting, as well as do something on this channel I've never really done before, which is cook a largemouth bass. I did do it in a survival video, but this is a little bit different. We're going to actually try and make a largemouth bass taste good and see what the boys in the boat think about it and see if, you know, if it's any good, really. Sammy D backing up the boat right now. But if you guys do want to try out Mystery Tackle Box, if you guys use my code, lettuce. What's up, Sam? What you do with the boat keys? I'm just letting my viewers know that they can get their first box for $4.99 if they use no my way. code, lettuce. No way. Yeah, man. Isn't That's that crazy? crazy deal. What was that? That's a crazy deal. Sammy D says it's a crazy deal. Look at that, guys. What's your question? Where are the boat keys? I don't know, you you used the boat last night. Kale, where are the boat keys? The boat keys are in the in the front right dash. Front right dash, there are the keys, bud. Got them! I got the boat keys! Nice! Alright, we got the boat keys. But seriously guys, Mystery Tackle Box is an awesome deal and they do come with a bunch of amazing baits. We've got some excite baits, some riot baits, a little beaver bait, some big bite baits, a little drop shot bait, booyah jig. River to Sea Jig, a Lucky John. These are some quality, quality baits right here. A Mystery Tackle Box exclusive little crankbait. And then personally my favorite bait in the box, the Mike Buka Baby Bull Shad. This bait has caught me some really nice fish and caught me a lot of nice fish. So we got that there. And that's really what comes in your Mystery Tackle Box. It's a box of baits every single month that they send you. It's just like Christmas every single month. And that is what today's video is sponsored by. And we are gonna take these baits right here me and Sam are going to use these baits to hopefully catch a 14-inch largemouth because that is the legal size here in the state of Wisconsin. And uh, cook it up for you guys right on the boat and see if largemouth bass is any good because it's kind of like a lot of people don't like to eat them. A lot of people think it's not good. You know, it's just there's a lot of, I don't know, what would you call that? A lot of stigma around a largemouth bass. And that's what we're going to test today. What's going on? He is launching the boat by himself right now. Let's go, let's go look at this. Oh, it's, it's loose, the winch is loose. <laughs> now unhook it. I needed to be able to get to the winch. Why don't you just go like this? Let's go. Somehow the boat's in the water right now. Um, thanks to Mr. Sam. Sam is my co-host today and he's gonna be helping me catch some of these delicious largemouth bass. Delicious, I guess, I don't know. I've never had one before. So we are gonna fish this lake. This is actually a, a lake that Sam used to have his cabin on. Uh, so I fished here many of times and I'm excited to get after it. Let's see your hops, bud. <laughs> It's nice out now, eh? Beautiful. So as soon as we get through this canal, we're gonna strap on our GoPros and go right into Water's fishing. Real low in here. Water's really low, according to Sammy. So thanks, thanks for that, Sam. And um, I'm probably, I, I think I'm gonna put Sam off with this little booyah jig with a little excite baits. A little, kind of a contrast, a green pumpkin trailer with the black and blue. Could work really, really well. I'm gonna flip the rye baits beaver, and then we'll have Cal in the back throwing the uh, baby bullshit. And that should hopefully lead us to our first 14 inch largemouth. One of us should catch it, 
and then uh, I'll show you guys how to clean it, how to cook it, and hopefully it tastes good. First cast, here we go. It's a little windy out here. We're trying to get to this back of this pocket so that way we can, you know, avoid the wind as much as possible. I'm flipping a little beaver bait. Flipping a little riot bait. How's that feel there, Jimmy? Time of year is September, so these fish should be, you know, either in the weeds or right off the weeds. Probably the bigger fish are out deeper and the, some of you know those 14 inch fish. The best thing to eat, at least I've been told for bass, is about a 14 to 17 inch bass. Anything over that, they just kind of get, with any fish in general, you want to eat the smaller ones. They taste better. Their meat doesn't have as much mercury in it. It's just that much better for you. Can there be one on this buoy right out here? What's Let's... freshwater fish have mercury? Really? Freshwater fish definitely have mercury, Samuel. They do? A hundred percent. I thought it was from something in the ocean, no? Nope. Nope, that'd be, that'd be wrong. They don't have much, I mean, whatever. What's mercury? Like, there could be one up in there. And this little beaver. Oh, there's one. Come on, out of, oh, this feels better. Oh, come on. Come on. Get yourself out of there. Get yourself out of there. Oh that yeah! Might, might oh, oh baby! That's it. And right there, look at that, son. That'll eat. <laughs> That'll eat. How big is that? It's kind of big. No, it's not that big. It's perfect size. Oh my god, I feel bad. I don't want to. I feel bad. He's blind. Look. It's not that big. It's kind of nice and fat and chunky and healthy. This is. Want to eat a nice meal? Well, that right there is a nice 15 inch largemouth. Unfortunately, today is his last day alive. Um, I usually. Should I just put him in the live hole and see if we catch a smaller one, real quick? Sure. Or just chop this guy up? Chop him up. Chop him up. Okay, I mean, it is a pretty good. Yeah, I feel like just any fish is going to be chunky. Right? Dude, there's so many fish in this lake that are probably that size. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah sure. Well, the first fish and a beautiful eating fish right there, probably 15 inches long on the Riot Baits Beaver. Thank you so much for providing today's lunch. Now, uh, I'm going to show you guys how to kill a fish very, very effectively. What I'm going to do is I'm going to instantly kill the fish right through the brain, completely dead. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to cut out oh, nice his gills. That way... He's completely dead now. I'm gonna take that fish and just bleed him out. I saw a video on Facebook going around, it was pretty funny, about like how the proper way to kill a fish and it actually was just like that. Like, if you don't want a fish not to feel any pain at all. And you know, eating fish is a natural part of life. It's part of the food chain and a bass. You know, I don't know. I don't really know how it's gonna taste good. We're gonna fry it, so anything fried usually tastes good. So that's kind of the plan. Let that baby bleed out. Another, <laughs> there's dice in the background hitting docks. Another reason why you want to bleed out the fish is that way your meat is not tainted with blood and uh, it's just going to be the whitest meat possible. So we're going to set up the grill now, set up the flame board, do a nice filleting of this bass and show you guys step by step what I would do to cook a largemouth bass. There we go, Dinker on the Booyah jig with the sights crawler there. Oh, that's just a real low guy. Nice, dude. That was really nice, man. I you caught one.
Well, of course, you know, as soon as we get the nice grill set up here and we get our largemouth bass right there, um, it starts to rain. Rain! Why is it raining? Okay, anyways, what are we gonna do about it? We don't want this fish to go to waste, so now I've got my beautiful cutting board out here, and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a slice. That's gonna be my first slice. I'm gonna hold the fish as hard as I can and make kind of a diagonal slice right there. And I'm just gonna run my knife down the bass's back. No, it's really raining. Then I'm gonna just follow that butthole down. And here we go. Connect that to that. We've got a beautiful filet of meat right there. And then I'm just gonna keep this actually connected. Go right here and just follow that now. Filet number one, not bad, not bad at all. Gonna have to take out a couple bones right in this area. And now it's really starting to rain. And unfortunately, I don't know what the laws are on exposing or getting rid of fish in this state. So I'm gonna just have a garbage bag here and I'm gonna throw this out into a dumpster just cause I feel like it might not be a good idea just to throw this back into the lake. And I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. Play number two, not as pretty. Right into this garbage bag here. So now what we've got here is two beautiful fillets. I'm gonna take this cutting board, rinse it off. Just clean up my fillets, make sure there's no bones in there. So this right here is what a 15 inch largemouth looks like, chopped up. Um, that's just the fillets of the fish, so you could cook a largemouth whole. I'm not really an expert at cooking fish whole at all, so I'm not going to get into that, but I just chunked it up. Now I'm going to use my secret recipe here. I feel like it wouldn't give it justice if I wasn't using Frank's Red Hot for this because it's just what I use on all my fish, so it's like I need to give the same treatment to a bass as I would a crappie, a bluegill, a walleye, something along those natures. So, I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit in there. I don't need to put, oh geez, oh, oh, oh no. We just spilled on the boat. Frank's Red Hot on the boat. Man down, man down. Okay, so all I'm gonna do now, okay, so now we've got, whoa, look at this, we've got, okay. okay. We've got a hole in the bag. We've got Frank's Red Hot everywhere. Can we, can you pass me some napkins? Do we have napkins? What's the what's the premise on that? We're in a bit of a situation here. Thankfully, my buddy Sam back there has got some napkins. Hey, can you pass me uh, some of that Guggen fish batter? And a plate? Well, by the time we managed to set up the grill, I feel like the seasons have changed out here. Sam is currently stuck on the only dock we've been fishing, and uh, we've got a pan and some oil. So we're gonna start this baby up right here. Oh, we got a lighter too. Look at that, lighter's right there. You gotta turn your propane on, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. A little propane on? Oh yeah, hear that? Whoa! Okay. That pan nice and hot. We're gonna fry this fish today in a little bit of canola oil. Dice, I'm gonna need you to step to the left side of the boat, please. Like a sun? Right there. No, no, I'm more looking to even out my oil in my pan here. Too much. Yeah, you way too much. Maybe a little, maybe a step to the right, just a half step, maybe. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Yeah, now we're about even there. Okay, here we go. First piece, dipping it in the batter. Nice little spicy batter we got going on. Oh, yeah, look at that. Well, when you don't have a pair of tongs, you just clean your pliers off as best as possible. 
Look at that. It's frying beautifully. You don't need to fry fish for that long. You just kind of want to get it nice and golden brown. Take that piece off. That burns. Look at that. Yes. Nice little golden crisp. Turn this down just to here. Here we go. Frying some more. Turn down that. That is it, oil's off. The only thing I didn't think through, Sam, is what are we gonna do with that hot oil? I'm gonna pour it in the lake. I don't think you should pour hot oil into a lake. Why? It's probably not good for the lake. Just a little bit of canola oil? I feel like I just, I'd get a, I'm waiting to get a ticket in the mouth for that. I gotta be, let's see what the commenters say. I, obviously we're not gonna do it. Just pour it in the woods, pull me up to shore. Pour it in the woods? Yeah. Is that legal? Dude, it's canola oil. We gotta be legal. That's legal. We're gonna save the it's oil right there. For trespassing, but oil set aside. You have got fresh largemouth bass with plier grease. Pliers grease. Huh? Fried fish. Tastes like any other. Yeah, it's good. Wow. Great. Oh, meteor. Yeah. Good, though. Really good. Yeah. Wow. Obviously, you only want to do this in places where there's a... Yeah, a lot of fish. Like, a whole thing about conservation and, like, I don't know, fishing in general is you want to make sure you pass on the resource to the next generation, to your kids, to your kids' kids. You don't want to burn anything out. I think the biggest thing about keeping bass is when you keep a bunch of 20 inch bass in the spring when they're spawning and when, you know, it's really not good for the ecosystem. But anyways, bass are awesome. Sorry, bud. No, you're all right. Especially if you're frying them. I mean, they're going to taste like any fried fish. Mmm, so good. And that's one fish right there. You know, you can have, that's a great appetizer for three guys. And we're going to have to have Cal help us finish this. But hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video of AP Bass. And thank you guys so much. And thanks to Mystery Tackle Box for sponsoring it and helping us catch this beautiful 15 inch bass how's it going we're, your rod still snagged no, <laughs> yeah we're still snagged on the rack up there that would be pretty sweet if i just leave. so we're obviously going to continue to fish for a little bit but hopefully you guys enjoyed this video um thanks again for sam for cal for helping out and filming this whole video out here and we will catch you guys on the next episode of ap bass before i end this video actually i feel like i have to catch one on this baby bullshit it's like one of my favorite baits of all time and I just feel like I owe it, especially to a bluegill pattern up north. Like, look at that sexual bait. I'm literally just gonna throw it on my jig rod because I'm too lazy to grab any other rod. I'm just gonna throw it right around those weeds and hopefully catch one. Oh, there's one. There's a fish. Nice. Yes. Well, and that fish is as little as the bait. Baby bullshit.